What is going on everyone? Welcome back to the Mock Draft Guy YouTube channel. If you are watching this video, it is right after Super Bowl 57 has commenced. Quick disclaimer for this video, I am recording this right before the Super Bowl actually begins so I can get it up as soon as the Super Bowl is over. So in case the end of the first round isn't the correct order, I figured it didn't matter because the two picks that I'm making at number 30 and number 31 don't have nothing to do with each other. So if anything, we could just dream and we could move one slot to the other if that be the case. So it might be the wrong order, but just know that those picks don't have anything to do with each other. So I will be doing trades in this mock as well. This is the first mock draft for the entire NFL first round that I'm doing in quite some time probably after the after week 17 was the last one that I did so uh, let's just roll right into it we're doing trades as I mentioned and the first pick for me is going to be traded I think the Chicago Bears hold out for King's ransom I think they get it and I think they get it from the Indianapolis Colts we've heard so many different you know rumors and reports and everything on who the Indianapolis Colts are really going to go with so now that we know that they're hiring Sean Steichen we know that they are probably going to go with a quarterback with their first pick, but I think that they are going to move up to number one. So they have their pick of the letter. So I'm going to move up here. I'm going to move Indy to number one overall, and we are going to draft a quarterback. I'm not really too concerned as you're going to see with the few trades that I'm making. I'm not really too concerned with the draft compensation. I feel like the compensation is always pretty tough to determine. So we're just going to do what we have to do, what's necessary to get the trade through. So at number one overall, I am going to go with Bryce Young. I think the Indianapolis Colts front office is completely enamored with Bryce Young. They're obsessed with him from what I am reading. I've also heard things about CJ Stroud. I've heard things about Will Levis as well, but the majority of the reports are it's Bryce Young for the Indianapolis Colts. And I'm going to have to agree with him. He is my QB1 as well. So I think it makes a lot of sense. We are going with Bryce Young at number one. And then consequently, after that pick, Houston at number two. I contemplated trading this pick, but I just don't think it makes sense. Even still with Will Levis and CJ Stroud on the board and even Anthony Richardson, I, you know, I still think that they make a selection here. I think they definitely get tempted to make a trade because of some draft compensation that might be too good to pass up. But I think ultimately they are going to make their pick and I think it's going to be CJ Stroud. Let me make one thing clear about Will Levis. I know a lot of people love Will Levis. A lot of people hate Will Levis. I think that him not going to the senior bowl really, really hurt his draft stock. I think that it kind of showed his true colors a little bit and maybe scouts are thinking, well, what is he hiding that he doesn't want to show at the senior bowl where all, where all eyes are going to be on him. So it kind of kind of threw me off a little bit there. So I'm going to go CJ Stroud at number two. I also read a report uh, yesterday, actually, that the gap between Bryce Young and CJ Stroud isn't as far as a lot of people think in terms of what pro scouts think of them. So I think it makes a lot of sense if Bryce Young goes one, I think CJ Stroud goes at number two. And then we have the Arizona Cardinals here at number three. And I am going to make another trade here at number three. I think with two quarterbacks going off the board with the first two picks, I think Carolina moves up. And the reason I think Carolina moves up to number three to make a selection is because the Las Vegas Raiders sitting there at number seven and the Seattle Seahawks sitting there at number five, they might take a quarterback. We don't know for sure. I really do think Las Vegas is going to wind up taking a quarterback. But if the Carolina Panthers just hold on to the number nine overall pick, they might not get a top four quarterback. So I think they just bite down. They have Frank Reich now who made Carson Wentz look like an MVP candidate, had him as a front runner MVP candidate until he tore his ACL. So I think they get Frank Reich, someone that will step right in and he could you know, he could mold into whatever he wants him to be. So I'm going to go up to Arizona. I'm going to have Arizona trade with the Carolina Panthers for the number three overall pick. Uh, let's see what kind of compensation this will bring here. Okay, that works, I guess. So we're going to go with Will Levis here. I think that in a perfect world, Carolina would try and trade up to number one or number two, but I think Houston's dead set on taking a quarterback. I think they really want CJ Stroud, but they're going to settle for Will Levis here. I think Will Levis is an interesting prospect. I know a lot of videos have surfaced recently on Twitter and YouTube that he doesn't sense pressure well, but he's got all the tool, all the physical tools, physical attributes you're looking for in a franchise quarterback. I don't think there's many better in the NFL that could mold a player that's as raw as Will Levis like Frank Wright can. So I think they 
They just go for it and they take Will Levis here at number three. And then with the Chicago Bears at number four, they essentially still have their pick of whatever defensive player that they want. And I still think it's going to be Jalen Carter. I think that three tech is obviously their biggest need. Well, really defensive line in general is their biggest need. But, you know, a lot of people are going to say, well, they're going to go out and sign Deron Payne. Okay, we don't know if that's necessarily true. So I'm going off of what we're looking at right now. If I'm doing what ifs, then all of this is going to be completely different. But I am going to go with Jalen Carter to be the new three tech for the Chicago Bears. Interior pressure is so important in today's NFL. And I think that Chicago gets the best player in the draft at number four. And then I think it's pretty simple. At number five, I really think whoever Chicago doesn't pick, that's who Seattle is going to pick. So that's pretty easy to say. It's going to be Will Anderson Jr. for me at number five. Then at number six, interesting here. I see Tyree Wilson on the board. I see Miles Murphy on the board, but I also see Christian Gonzalez. And I think that even though Detroit could still use an edge rusher, they definitely need a cornerback. And CB1 for me in this draft is Christian Gonzalez. He's got everything that you're looking for for a physical boundary corner in the NFL. And I think he makes a ton of sense to Detroit with the number six overall pick. And that's who I'm going with there. Then at number seven, Las Vegas doesn't trade up and they get their quarterback of the future, who they think is going to be their quarterback of the future. I'm going with Anthony Richardson here, people. I really think that this is a really interesting fit for the Las Vegas Raiders. And I think Richardson is going to go a lot higher than people think. I mean, there's polarizing prospects like Will Levis, Brian Bercy, and then there's super polarizing prospects like Anthony Richardson. I'm buying into the hype. I think Anthony Richardson has the highest ceiling, blows everyone else out of the water, has the highest ceiling of any quarterback in this draft class. I mean, he has the raw abilities that from the gods. I mean, he is he's strong. He's big. He's got an absolute nuke of a right arm. He's fast. He's got it all. He just needs someone that could put it together. Is that Josh McDaniels? I don't really know, but I think they're going to take a chance. I think they're going to go Anthony Richardson at number seven. And then here, it's uh, really an edge rusher here for Atlanta at number eight. And I'm going to go with Tyree Wilson. I think that Tyree Wilson offers just a little bit more versatility on the defensive line than Miles Murphy does. You kind of know exactly what you're going to get from Miles Murphy. That's going to be an edge rusher. But you can move. Tyree Wilson all over the line of scrimmage, and he could be an absolute difference maker. Probably the strongest uh, defensive lineman in the entire class, in my opinion. If you watch his tape, he just bullies offensive linemen all day long. I think it's going to be a great move for the Atlanta Falcons, whether they go Miles Murphy or Tyree Wilson. It's just a matter of preference at this point, and I am going to go with Tyree Wilson here at number eight. At number nine, Arizona finds himself in some interesting territory here as they kind of have their pick of what they want. Miles Murphy is on the board. There's two top cornerbacks on the board. There's all the offensive linemen on the board. Listen, everyone has their different preferences. Me, if I'm drafting in this position, I am taking the best cornerback that is left. It's absolutely no guarantee that Byron Murphy comes back in free agency. And if he doesn't, that leaves you with absolutely nothing. And Devin Witherspoon, who for me, I have Christian Gonzalez as uh, CB1A, and then Devin Witherspoon as CB1B. I mean, they are both exceptional prospects. Devin Witherspoon, an, an amazing tackler for his size. He's extremely physical as well. I think he is one of still the most, the least talked about top prospects in the entire draft. And I think Devin Witherspoon will be an amazing addition for the Arizona Cardinals at number nine. So I'm going to go with Devin Witherspoon. And then Philadelphia, well, this is me before the Super Bowl even starts. Maybe Super Bowl champions, maybe Super Bowl runner-ups. Regardless, Miles Murphy falls into their lap here at number 10. I think they go and get him. And I'm going to go with Miles Murphy there. That's pretty much a no-brainer. That doesn't need much explanation at all at, at Miles Murphy at number 10. Then you have the Tennessee Titans here. Another team I kind of mulled around thinking thinking about maybe they would trade up, maybe to get a top quarterback. Uh, I did hear that they were one of the mystery teams that kind of offered Chicago something for the number one overall pick. Don't really know how much that's true. I'm not really going to buy into the smoke screens that much there. I think Tennessee was kind of just inquiring to see what it would cost. And it, probably to move up those 10 spots cost a really pretty penny. So I think they're going to stay here. Offensive line is obviously first and foremost here. Now we're going to go with Paris Johnson Jr. I still think he is tackle number one on my board and we're going to go with him. It's, it's exactly what Tennessee needs right now. 
Houston at number 12. Going to go with a little bit of a wild card here. They desperately need some defensive line help. And there is one defensive lineman that has just been shooting up draft boards for essentially the last month now. And that's Lucas Van Ness. And I'm going to take him here. I think by the time that the combine rolls around, by the time that pro days roll around, he is going to show out. He is going to be a top 15 pick. And I think that he falls in a really great situation for himself here at number 12. Houston desperately needs some help on the defensive line, at edge rusher, at defensive tackle, you name it. And I think they start perfectly with CJ Stroud and Lucas Van Ness. I, I kind of thought of Quentin Johnston here, but I think the defensive line needs are just too big to take a wide receiver at number 12. So we're gonna go Lucas Van Ness. Then with my New York Jets at number 13, not going to sugarcoat it. Do we need offensive line help? Absolutely. Can we get a stud defensive back? that is going to make our secondary even better? Absolutely we can. And I'm going with Brian Branch at number 13. I have been hell bent on this pick for quite some time now. I think this would be an amazing addition to the Jets secondary. You'd have DJ Reed, you'd have Sauce Gardner, you'd have Brian Branch. It's an amazing young nucleus of players that you could continue to build your defense around. I think it makes a ton of sense. He could also come down, play nickel linebacker in sub packages. He could play a little bit of slot cornerback as well. I, there's a lot to like about Brian Branch to the Jets, and I'm buying in. At number 14, New England. A lot of ways that they can go here. There's Joey Porter Jr. on the board. There's Clinton Johnson on the board, Jordan Addison. I think New England's going to make the quote-unquote unsexy pick, and they're going to take Peter Skaronsky if, if he's here. They really, really need some offensive line now, pretty desperately, and Peter Skaronsky might be the most polished offensive lineman in the entire class. So I'm not going to overthink it. We're going Skaronsky here at number 14. At number 15, another pick I'm not going to overthink. This is one that I've been pretty locked on for the last couple weeks, and that's Michael Mayer as tight end number one to the Green Bay Packers. There is, I don't think there's a single Green Bay Packer tight end that's under contract, and I don't really think they want any of those tight ends that are under contract. So I'm going to go with Mayer for a fresh start at the tight end position for the Green Bay Packers, whoever's throwing the football to him. So we're going to go Michael Mayer here, Washington at number 16. Interesting case as well. A lot of good offensive linemen still on the board, some great cornerbacks on the board, and Joey Porter Jr. staring at me right here. I think it makes perfect sense at number 16 to get someone like Joey Porter Jr. Still a little bit raw, but immensely talented and supremely athletic. It, it's a match made in heaven for me here at number 16. And then you have the Pittsburgh Steelers at number 17. Uh, I think that if I made a different selection for Washington at 16, maybe like an interior offensive lineman like John Michael Schmitz, maybe, maybe Osiris Torrance, Steve Avilas, someone like that, I think I would pick Joey Porter Jr. at Pittsburgh. A lot of Pittsburgh Steelers fans really, really like Porter Jr. And uh, I like the fit too, but he goes one pick earlier, so I'm going to settle for offensive line here. I'm going to go Broderick Jones. And if you're settling for Broderick Jones, people, that's a really good place to settle. This is a guy who took 423 pass blocking snaps last season, didn't allow a single sack. He's been excellent in the SEC for Georgia, and I think he'd be a perfect addition for Pittsburgh here at number 17. Then Detroit at pick number 18. I'm going to bite, and I know that this is going to be a controversial pick here, but I think the fit just makes a lot of sense right here, especially with the defensive line needs of the Detroit Lions. I'm going to go with Brian Brissy here at number 18. I really don't want to, but I think it's still a little bit too early to take a linebacker. I'm not really, I'm not going to take an interior offensive lineman this early. I'm definitely not taking a tight end. And I don't think, I don't really like any of the other edge rushers that are really here at pick number 18. I'm going to go with the potential that Brian Brisey has. There's a reason why he was the number one overall recruit coming out of high school for his year. He's got it. And we've seen flashes of it. He's coming off of a bad injury two years ago. He didn't play every single game this past year. But I think someone's going to bank on his potential. I think it might be the Detroit Lions. I'm going to go Brian Brisey here at number 18. Then we're moving on to Tampa Bay at number 19. Contemplated trading this pick here just because I think Tampa Bay is in kind of a weird situation. But there's an amazing cornerback that's still on the board right here. And I think we got to go for it. And that's Cam Smith. Arguably, a lot of people CB1. Uh, he is awesome. SEC battle-tested cornerback. Good size. Good strength. Amazing in zone coverage as well. I, it's, it's perfect. I don't think they have money to pay all their uh, big-time free agents. And they're going to have to let someone go. So I'm going to go with Cam Smith here at number 19. And then at number 20, I'm going to make a trade. With no wide receivers 
still off the board at this point, 20 picks in. I think we have a team bite, and we have a team bite and come up and finally make one of those selections. And for me, that's going to be the New York Giants. I know some people are going to say, well, well, why would you trade up only five spots to get them? I mean, but, but look at who's next. you got the Chargers who could potentially take a receiver, Baltimore who's going to probably take a receiver, Minnesota who might take a receiver, and then Jacksonville as well who could take a receiver. So, you know, if you stay at number 25, you might miss out on all those great guys in the first round. So I think they just pull the trigger and they go and they move up and they get the number one wide receiver on the board. It shouldn't take too much to get this pick, probably like a fourth rounder, a fourth and a sixth will probably do it. Yeah, it will to move up five spots. And I'm going to take Quinton Johnston here. This is, this solves, well, not really solves, but it certainly helps the New York Giants boundary wide receiver issues. 6'4", 215 pounds, can run like the wind as well. There's a lot to like about him. There's a couple things not to like, but I think that you bank on the potential and you get your potential wide receiver one in the draft to pick number 20 for the New York Giants. And then the Chargers at pick number 21. I have been pretty adamant about this pick for a couple weeks now. I'm going with Dalton Kincaid. I think that there's a very real possibility that this pick could eat, also be Michael Mayer, that maybe Kincaid might even be tight end one. It depends on how well he shows out at the combine and his pro day. But I think Kincaid right here at number 21 would be an excellent addition for the Los, Los Angeles Chargers. I mean, they still right now have Keenan Allen. They have Mike Williams. Yeah, they got great guys on the outside, Josh Palmer, DeAndre, Carter as well. Uh, they got weapons, and I think that they need another tight end here. I'm pretty sure that Gerald Everett's going to be a cut candidate. Donald Parham is good, but he doesn't offer too much in the passing game. I think you get the potential tight end one here at pick number 21 if you're the Chargers. Then at pick number 22, pretty simple. They need, they desperately need a wide receiver. I'm making this pick assuming that they get a long-term deal done with uh, Lamar Jackson. They could go edge here. They could go go cornerback as well. I don't see them going running back with a healthy J.K. Dobbins at the end of the season. He really, really played excellent. And he really uh, solidified himself as running back one in Baltimore for now, at least as long as he could stay healthy. So I'm going to go with Jordan Addison, a guy who is just an amazing, amazing player on the outside. And I would love to see what he could do with Lamar Jackson throwing him the football. Number 23, we're going with the Minnesota Vikings. A little bit of a different pick here. I know cornerback is a big need for them. It's a deep cornerback class, and I'm not really a fan of Keely Ringo going to Minnesota, I'll be honest with you. I like Jackson Smith Najigba here. I, I like KJ Osborne to stay on the outside, Justin Jefferson to stay on the outside as well. Maybe if they could work something out with Adam Thielen, he comes back as well. And then you have a perfect slot guy in Jackson Smith Najigba. Imagine how many targets he would get with JJ on the outside, KJ Osborne, or Adam Thielen on the other side. I think it's it's too good to give up. I know that I, I usually draft for need, but this is more of a draft for the best player available at a, at a position of maybe need. So I think JSN would be a great pick here at number 23. Moving on to Jacksonville, number 24. Uh, I'm, not, I'm still kind of tentative on the whole Keely Ringo thing. Uh, I, I think I'm going to go with a tackle here. I'm going to go with Anton Harrison. A lot of people think Anton Harrison, and myself included, is the best pass-blocking tackle in the entire class. I'm going to have to agree with some of those people. I think it's a toss up between him and Broderick Jones, but they're, it's 1A and 1B between the two of them. You know, you replace Jawan Taylor. I know Jawan Taylor had an okay year this year, but you know, you let him walk in free agency and you get a young stud right tackle, potentially even left tackle the future. Who knows? I'm going to go Anton Harrison. Then with Seattle's pick now at pick number 25. I'm going to go interior of the offensive line. I know Osiris Torrance is here, but I we got to go with John Michael Smith. This is a guy who I thought was incredible already, and then he went out and blasted his opponents at the Senior Bowl. This dude is easily interior offensive lineman number one for me. I know that he doesn't offer much versatility. He's pretty much just a center at the next level, but that's exactly what Seattle needs. And John Michael Schmitz is here. You go out and you get it. And then Dallas at number 26. I'm still rolling with the people. I am going Bijan Robinson here. I am sorry if you don't like that, but can you imagine Bijan Robinson in Jerry World? I think it would be electric for everyone watching, for Cowboys fans. I think it would be really, really cool to see. I'm going Bijan Robinson at number 26. Number 27, Buffalo. I know Jameer Gibbs is a sexy pick here. I'm going Osiris Torrance. They desperately need some interior offensive lineup. I think Josh Allen being so mobile kind of masks the type of 
uh, interior offensive line problems that they truly have. So I'm going to uh, buy in and I'm going to take Osiris Torn 6'6", 345 pounds, could even play tackle on Slee if he wanted to at that size. So offers a lot of versatility on the offensive line. Then you have the Cincinnati Bengals here at number 28. I'm going with potentially an uh, outside of the box pick here. I'm going Darnell Wright here. I think that Darnell Wright at 6'6", 337 offers you a lot of versatility if you want him to play left tackle. I know Jonah Williams has been pretty good. You know, you want him to play right tackle, whatever it may be. Lyle Collins was pretty terrible last year. And I know they're not paying him too much, but I think you need better production out of your tackle if you're going to pay him $8 million a year. I'm going Darnell right here. He's another one who also had a very, very strong showing at the Senior Bowl. Then number 29, this was kind of a tough one for me with all of the top wide receivers off the board. I was thinking Josh Downs. I was thinking Jalen Hyatt. You know, though, I, I feel like Chris Olave is just a better version of Jalen Hyatt already. I, I kind of want to stray away from the wide receivers for now. It's a deep wide receiver class. I'm going to go with, where is he? I'm going to go with, if I could find him, that would be awesome. I'm going with Keon White. Keon White is another guy who is flying up draft boards. 6'5", 286, 290, depending on you know what report you're looking at. This is a guy that could play on the interior as well on a 4-3 if you want as an under you know as an undersized maybe three tech pass rushing defensive tackle or he's a stud on the outside as well they have a lot of needs on the defensive line they have essentially no money to spend i think this pick if they stay here at number 29 is a defensive player i'm going with keon white and then with the maybe super bowl champion kansas city chiefs i am going with jalen hyatt I think that this is an amazing, amazing proposition. You have a guy who is a pure deep threat, pure speed on the outside, paired up with Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, I'm buying into that. I'm taking Jalen Hyatt. And then at number 31 for maybe the Super Bowl champions, this is where Keely Ringo stops falling. I think that if Keely Ringo is there at number 30 or number 31, it doesn't matter for me. I think you go out and you get him if you're Philadelphia. You're essentially still playing with house money. You got one of the best edge rushers in the entire draft at number 10. Somehow fell to you at number 10. I think you go and you get a guy that potentially, with his ceiling, could be CB1 in this class. I don't think he is, but he has the potential at his size and speed. So I'm going Keely Ringo there. And there you have it. There is my after Super Bowl 2023 NFL mock draft. Let me know what you guys think with trades. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below. Please leave a like. Please comment. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Thank you guys so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed the Super Bowl. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one.